Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic out there. So, today on the podcast, what are those spinning things to the left and right of the uh, trust level column in the Boeing 737? Stay tuned. Okay guys, so to answer a question that I'm getting uh, quite often on the channel, what are those spinning round things that keeps moving when you see um, videos from the cockpit of a 737? The short answer to that is they are stabilizer trim wheels. Okay, They show the movement of the stabilizer trim. Now I'm not going to go in too deeply into what the uh, the actual trim is. I'm just going to give you a very short overview of it here. But if you go into the Mentor Aviation app, I have just added a, a new um, documentary. It's about 12 minutes long that gives you a good explanation of the different types of trim systems that exist and stuff. It's completely free. So uh, get the Mentor Aviation app and just check that out and you'll get a full explanation of that. But in short, on a, uh, on a 737, the back part of the wing, okay, the back wing here, is called a stabilizer. Okay. Now, on smaller aircraft, we they use something called a trim tab in order to trim an aircraft or a trim rudder. Okay. Uh, the 737 needs to be able to trim in a much larger range, much larger speed range, and also um, weight and balance range than, for example, a Cessna will. So in the case of a 737, the entire back wing, the entire stabilizer can actually be moved up and down in order to trim the aircraft. Now you might ask, what is trim the aircraft? Well, in short, what it is, is that the, the aircraft will require, depending on speed and weight and balance, so depending on if there's a lot of people, if, for example, in the front of the aircraft or in the back of the aircraft or the speed that the aircraft is flying in, you are going to need different amount of back pressure or push on the, um, the, um, the elevator in order to, to maintain straight and level flight. Okay, so it is very, very uncomfortable to sit for a long period of time with a constant back pressure. Right. We don't want to do that. It's very, very hard to maintain. Um, so what a pilot wants to do is we want to trim away the forces. Okay. Now you can do that, for example, if the aircraft is to, supposed to fly slowly. Right. So let's say the aircraft needs to slow down. When the aircraft slows down, in order to maintain the altitude, it's going to have to increase its angle of attack. So basically, as you slow down the aircraft, you're going to have to add more and more back pressure in order to keep the aircraft straight and level, which means that you're going to need more and more force. Now, what you're actually doing is you're using the elevator here to, um, to force the nose up to maintain the higher attitude. Okay. Now, what we can do in order to keep to, to you know to not having to sit with that much back pressure is we can change the angle of attack of the entire stabilizer, and that is what we're doing. There is actually a jack screw in the back here that uh, moves the entire back wing, the entire stabilizer, up and down depending on our, uh, depending on how much back pressure is needed. All right. So we have a trim switch which is on our yoke that we can move in either direction. So if we want to um, trim the aircraft forward, so if we want to pitch down, what you do is you pitch the aircraft manually down to the new position that you want, the new attitude that you want. And then when you feel how much force it's needed, you then add trim in order to, for those forces to completely disappear. That's how you fly. You're not supposed to fly using the trim switch. You're supposed to add into the attitude you want and then trim away the forces. So that's what we do. So when you see that the, that wheel is moving, it is actually showing how much trim that we are manually putting in, either forth, forward or back, or if the autopilot is engaged, it's showing how much trim the autopilot is using because the autopilot really hates when the aircraft is out of trim, which means that it is constantly trimming. So that's why you will see when the aircraft is, you know, the pilots are sitting there, they're not doing anything, they're not actually flying the aircraft, but still the trim wheels are moving. And the reason for that is that the autopilot is constantly trimming. Now, you might ask yourself, why? Why a big wheel? Why not have this done, you know, 
in a box somewhere where it's not making loads of noise and not moving. Well, actually, uh, it has a good reason. Um, part of flying a Boeing is that the Boeing will constantly show you what it's doing. If it's adding thrust, you will see how the thrust levels are actually moving. If it's decreasing thrust, it's the same. If it's turning, you will see how the yoke is moving, or forth and back. And if it's trimming, you will see how the trim wheels are moving. Now, even if we are not looking specifically at the thrust lever or the trim wheel when it's happening, you do get a good feeling when you're sitting in the cockpit just by seeing how the autopilot is interacting, which means that if something goes wrong, say for example that you have a stabilizer runaway, that is if something goes wrong with the motor that is actually uh, driving the stabilizer, you will, you will definitely notice almost straight away that the trim is moving all the time. So you will do that, but the autopilot is engaged, the trim will be moving, the autopilot will be forced to kind of counteract the movement of the stabilizer trim. But this, even if you're not monitoring it, you will almost within a couple of seconds realize that something is wrong and you can intervene. Rather than letting it go, if there was no indication of it, you would have to let it go until the autopilot cannot hold it. And when the autopilot cannot hold it, it will disconnect and you might have a sudden pitch change in either direction. So the part of the Boeing philosophy is that you're supposed to be able to monitor what the autopilot is doing. It's like a third crew member that you can monitor. You see, even though you cannot see them physically there, you can see the inputs and it makes it much easier to have situational awareness when you're flying. All right. So uh, I hope that tells you a little bit about what the trim wheels are. Um, I've also had questions of whether you can uh, manually trim it. So Yes, you can, in case the, um, the electrical trim wouldn't be working, or if we have a stabilizer trim runaway, for example, uh, then you're going to have to, to trim the aircraft manually. And what we do then is not like a Cessna where you move the wheel like this, you actually have a handle, which I'll show you here. So as you can see, you just fold the handle out, and then you can use that to trim either forward or the back. There's also different speeds to the trim wheel. Uh, when the flaps are extended, the, uh, the trim wheel will be moving faster, so it will be quicker to trim with the um, flaps extended. And when the flaps are retracted, the trim will be slower for the same amount of input. So that's what it is, guys. It's a trim wheel. It's helping the aircraft to trim. And once again, if you want to know exactly how the different trim systems are working in different aircraft. Go into the Mentor Aviation app, look at the playlist Essential Knowledge for All Pilots and you'll find a, uh, a video there about trim. For now, I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic out there and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.